All right, Kevin Boutwell has a great uh, a comment here. He says, I'm not familiar with the guy being shown on the video, but why would Revelation 17 have to be the Catholic Church? There's no evidence for that if rightly divided. All right, so uh, first of all, I'm going to show you exactly. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's not even, it's not even a, a close. All right, there's absolutely no question about it, and the evidence is overwhelming. So, um, now I have to preface it. If you're a Catholic, you're not going to be able to see it because you don't want to see it. Um, there's just absolutely nothing I can do for you. All right, I would like for you to see it, but... All I can do is show it to you, and if you follow the spirit of truth, man, you're going to see it. And if your eyes are opened, and if you're honest, you ought to be able to see it. It's it, Look, I get it when you're, it took me a long time, you know, I couldn't figure the stuff out, and I was wondering why is there so many denominations in the world? You know, you got Presbyterian, you got Lutheran, you got Methodist, you got Baptist, and so on and so forth. You got the Mormon Church, you got the Catholic Church, you got Muslims over here, you got Hindus, and you got Buddhists, and and God knows who. You got all these denominations and separations and so on and so forth. And I, I couldn't figure none of it out. You got people saying, well, the Catholics are evil. You got people saying Jews are evil. And you got people saying Republicans are evil. And you got people saying Democrats are evil. And they're all right. Every one of them, they're all right because they're all evil. But how do I find the truth? And the truth is uh, starts with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you have faith, then your eyes are open, right? And even unto this day, when Moses is read, there's a veil upon their heart. And until they believe, until they have faith, and then the veil is lifted, when it, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, when the veil is taken away, then your eyes are open, and now you're able to see. And now, if you are saved, now is the time to see. All right, forget about what you were told. Forget about all the lies that you've been sold. All right, give them back and buy the truth and sell it not. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Revelation 17. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters all right <clears throat> so in context and uh, it's important to understand one that the great whore is the same as the beast all right, and I'll explain that as we go all you have to do is connect the dots and see that the great whore is the beast and the beast is the kingdom of this world we can go back to Daniel this is all going to come together. Just hang tight. All right, so if we go if we go to Daniel, whatever it is, 7. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. All right, so in Daniel's prophecy, he, he has four beasts until the end of the world. All right, and he lists the first three beasts. Babylonian Empire or the uh, King of Babylon and then the Medes and Persians and then the Greeks or Grisha and then the fourth one is not mentioned but we can figure out the fourth one by just simply uh, I think going to Luke 2 1 it says it talks about Caesar declared a decree that the whole world should be taxed. So it should be pretty obvious at this point that Caesar is the king and the Roman Empire is the kingdom of the world. All right, so the fourth beast undoubtedly is the Roman Empire. Keep that in mind. Now, verse 2 With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, 
and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. In other words, if you think of wine as a spirit, they're mixing the spirit of their government, if you will, with the spirit of the Catholic Church. So, the, first of all, I, I should have mentioned this, the great whore, the reason why it's the great whore, because you think of the wife or the bride of Christ as the church or the people of God, the great whore is the wannabe wife, right? The fake wife, the not really the wife, woman, the prostitute, if you will. It's not the true wife. All right, and then we go to uh, like a parable in Matthew 13 when Jesus says, um, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. If you understand, tares look exactly alike wheat the on the only difference uh you know a farmer could tell but the only difference uh, a dummy like me could tell is when it comes harvest time the wheat turns golden brown and the tares their seeds turn black and become poisonous but <clears throat> in the process of growing together you can't tell them apart and the same thing with um you you've got the you've got the the real people of God and then you've got this um, almost like a, a copycat people of God uh, this copycat religion this great whore that looks almost identical to the real church of God okay so you got the real church and then you've got the fake church you got the wheat church and you got the terror church and it's hard to tell a difference but there's a huge difference now keep that in mind all right that's why it's called the great whore and a woman uh, is um, meant to mean uh, like a, a religion like a spiritual religion that's why it's called the great whore now just keep all that in mind so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns okay so this the woman sits on the beast okay so that you think of this as the Roman Catholic Church sits upon all the governments of the world. She's at the very top. If you think of a pyramid, she's at the very top of the pyramid. You've heard the old phrase, all roads lead to Rome. That's true. But uh, not obviously not in a positive way, not in a good way. And the woman was arrayed with purple and scarlet, <clears throat> excuse me, and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now we could, you know, easily go and look at some images of the, you know, how marvelous, how wondrous the Roman Catholic Church is. And that probably won't get any from Google, huh? No, of course not. But we could do this here. I mean, if you if the images matter to you, that is right. So, <laughs> I mean, gee whiz, I, do I even have to? Look, let me encourage you to look at these images if you're happen not to be familiar with. The Roman Catholic Church. I mean, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Purple and scarlet color. If you want to look at the images, I want to encourage you to do that if that matters to you, but it's obvious what's going on here. And upon her 
forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right, so mystery, Babylon the Great. So it's it's sort of a mystery because she doesn't come out and tell the whole world, hey, I own you. This place is mine, right? Instead, she controls all the kings of the earth. And she sits upon all the kings of the earth. And Babylon the Great just simply means this is in the same spirit that we that I just showed you back in Daniel 7 when Daniel has this vision and he tells us that the four beasts are the four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Uh, where is that at right here? Four great beasts. Alright, so um, at the time there was the king of Babylon, all right, and then of course, like I said, he mentions three of the four beasts, and then the fourth beast we conclude is the Roman Empire. All right, keep all that in mind. All right, and so the fourth beast, as well as the second and third beast, are all in the same spirit, and that is the spirit of this first kingdom, which is. Uh, the king of Babylon and the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth so you think about the mother meaning or signifying a spiritual organization if you will or a religion uh, the mother of harlots uh, you've often heard the Roman Catholic Church will call itself the mother church and for that reason and many other reasons, I believe that they are the ones who are uh, planting ideas uh, around the world and creating these, you know, like uh, Mormonism and Muslim or Islam and uh, all these number of uh, denominations that we're seeing today. You know, if you can't tell the difference in your church if it's Catholic or Protestant uh, you're Catholic <laughs> if you can't tell if your Bible is Catholic or Protestant it's Catholic that's why you gotta stick with the King James Bible it is the pure Word of God in the English language and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. All right, so there's significant uh, history relating to um, the Roman Catholic Church going after the true Christians. All right, doesn't if you don't want to buy that, doesn't matter. Okay, if you don't want to believe the history, I get it. But I mean, like with the history of uh, King James. Remember, remember the 5th of November. On the 5th of November in 1604, they tried to kill the Roman Catholic Church. The Jesuits tried to kill King James because he was translating the Bible into the English language. And the Roman Catholic Church forbid that. In fact, they hung William Tisdale and then after he died they took his body and burned his body because he was translating the Bible into the English language now <laughs> that's your that's your Catholic Church for you okay now it's harder to get away with today but uh, that's what happened back then and so ultimately uh, we did get that translation you can't you can't stop the Word of God all right now and I wondered with great admiration now this is easy to do or easy to see at least how wondrous how marvelous the Roman Catholic Church is how beautiful
let's do it this way and this is incredible man this doesn't look like any church that I've ever been in and I wondered with great admiration it's incredible incredibly beautiful of course when you own the world and you control everybody you have all the money that you could ever possibly desire you can do whatever you want you then you can create these places like this this is incredible really I mean just uh, Vatican City has to be one of the most or it has to be the most beautiful city in the world when you go inside and, and look at all the structures that they have and God knows what all they have but I mean it's just incredible and I wondered with great admiration you are not going to see that in Kellogg Iowa you know what I'm saying this is something uh, unique in the world and the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of the life, from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is now this is a critically important to understand because Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world all right clearly the beast of Revelation is talking about is is the fourth beast excuse me the the fourth beast is the book is the beast of Revelation now when it says the beast that was and is not and yet is well how do you explain that well it's real easy real easy because look man the Roman Empire Caesar doesn't run the world today well what happened well I believe this is just my way of looking at it and that is that Caesar was the king of the world. He's king of the earth. He had it all. And then Jesus comes along and one ups him, showing that he has power greater than Caesar. So Caesar being incredibly egotistical, a great you know, an egomaniac, figure we gotta do something at least equal to what Jesus accomplished. Jesus proved that he's God of this, of heaven and earth, right? And so Caesar and his really smart, really powerful people that he had, he, they organized this plan to transform their power into a spiritual power. And that's when they went from the Roman Empire and transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church. The beast that was and is not and yet is. There's no doubt in my mind. Because you, you don't have five beasts in Daniel. You have four. And the fourth beast is clearly the Roman Empire. And the end has not come so this has this is the only possibility right here the beast that was was the Roman Empire trans and is not and then transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church and there's no question about and there look they even claim over 1 billion people the largest religion in the world today bar none not even there's not even a close second far and away the largest religion in the world now keep that all that in mind and here is the mind which has wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits and there are seven kings 
five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition now this is clearly speaking of a succession of popes in other words the Pope has always been the Antichrist and the Pope and the Caesar it basically the same uh, the same king if you will the same power that they hold they just changed the, the title really that's all they did and what does Pope mean Pope means Holy Father so they went from King Caesar to now Holy Father making themselves to be God even greater than God I mean there's no other way to look at it Holy Father means God Almighty if you think Pope is God Almighty there's nothing I can do for you all right and then of course again this is just a succession of popes five are fallen one is and the other's not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short space just like the one before and the one before and the one before it's simply a succession of popes and then of course the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth which in my view just simply means the overriding uh, power of the woman because you got the woman riding on the beast and it's the same thing and the beast is the power and then the the kings if you will are the popes that ride on the beast all right so anyways the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast and so in my mind I I think I believe this is the agents of the Roman Catholic Church that are act sort of as guardians all throughout the world you you look at the for example the head of the UN United Nations the head of the WHO all right the head of the European Union and so on and so forth you look at all these guardians they don't have a kingdom but they have power as kings all right and so that's what I believe fully uh, in your it's pretty obvious to me these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast so all these the three that I mentioned they're all agents of the Pope just because they don't come out and tell you you know sometimes people lie sometimes people deceive and sometimes people hide their agendas but I'm telling you if that's what the Bible says I believe the Bible these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful so it's pretty clear that the entire world is against us that are saved that they are against those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ when you went to school when I went to school I, you know I was there for you know over 15 about 15 and a half years or whatever it was Heck, I don't know 16 and a half so 17 who cares um, they never taught the law of Moses they never taught the truth of Jesus Christ and they taught an alternate worldview and if you believe in this alternate worldview then you have to put your faith and your trust and your hope in political leaders that's the world that we live in we have to depend on doctors experts and politicians to save us to lead us to guide us to heal us and therefore all of our hope and trust and faith are in them it's an alternate worldview an alternate reality and the truth of the matter is we have one hope 
and that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other possibility, there's no other way to be saved but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Your doctor is not going to save your life. Your politicians are not going to save this world. Your only hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> okay. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sits, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So we see this today, very obviously. The Roman Catholic Church is in every country all around the world, and they speak in every language all around the world, and over you know, 14% of the world is Catholic. It's incredible. There's a lot of Catholics out there. And uh, it's pretty obvious, man. It's pretty obvious. It's not one sect of one people in a village in Africa. It's everybody uh, in the world is affected by these guys. Okay? And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Now the way I understand this, okay, the beast is going to screw it up. It, and they are screwing it up. And, um, and there's going to be a, uh, a conflict, if you will. But ultimately, the the these uh, how do I say this that these agents of the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Catholic Churches these are not a perfect uh, combination I don't know how to say it let me say it this way ultimately they're all going to be destroyed all right so ultimately the Roman Catholic Church is going to burn and so also will um, these people, these agents of the Roman Catholic Church. To me, that's what that means, okay? I wanted to uh, philosophize a little more than I probably needed to, but that's ultimately, that's what to me, that's what that means. It's They're all going to burn. Uh, because they're not of God. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast <clears throat> until the words of God shall be fulfilled. In other words, until the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth well, right there the woman which is the Roman Catholic Church is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth so that means the woman reigns over your president and not vice versa <clears throat> 